Welcome to Inside of a Civic. Uh, we're going to take this car for a test drive with its new twin plate clutching and its limb slip diff. And I'll show you the torments of driving it through a town centre, hopefully, because uh, that's where I'm going. Going to the big smoke. It's uh, it's quite heavy on the foot. Um, it's got a very fine margin of sort of like slip. I'd say like a 0.04 of a mil. It's very close to being on or off. And sometimes if you're driving, track change down a gear, so if like in fifth you want to go to fourth, it's, if, you, if you give it a tiny little blip of the throttle as you do that, it seems to be a lot better. But yeah, so at traffic lights, you'll either, well, currently I'm either wheel spinning or I'm stalling, which is amazing fun for the car behind, or the car in front, which I nearly crash into. So uh, this could be a video for my insurer to look at and go, yeah, we need to make a payout. Um, and that's what the problem is, because he can't drive. Yeah, so let's go and take this for a little drive in the glorious Cumbrian sunshine. Nice day today. Still got no air con. Oh well. Right, cool. So let's try and set off from my driveway. Love that starter motor noise. Right, so. Yeah, that's there. Uh, yeah, hopefully that shows up on camera. It's a bit notchy. And then we're off. But yeah, so I'm still bending this clutch in. Um, you're supposed to do 500 mile uh, running on it, according to CG Motorsport. I'm over 100 miles in it now. I'm not exactly taking, you know, I'm not exactly abusing it. I, I am trying to just drive it like a car. Uh, I'm not going to be doing any launches or anything. To at least I've done probably about four, 500 miles on it anyway. That's just because you've obviously got the two friction plates. They need to bed themselves in the material properly because they've got like that bit in between. So once they're all bedded in, you should be good. Um, so for now, yeah, I'm just taking it, driving like a car and trying to get used to the fact that it's got a twin plate clutch in it, having never driven one before. It makes it very interesting. Um, it's pretty much only just traffic and stop starts that are annoying, but you can, if you bev it a little bit higher than you normally would, it's fine, it's dead easy. It's fine going up the gears, no problems at all. Oh, boost cut, forgot about that. Um, yeah, it's still maybe a little bit too cold. So yeah, so it, it just drive okay. It's not really a huge issue, but you can definitely feel it when you come to go down the gear. You can hear the judgment. If you go up a gear, it doesn't do that. So I think the easiest thing to do is when you're changing down the gear, is just give it a tiny blip of the throttle or sort of let it gradually match itself in, but it's very difficult to do that. So if I get used to just blipping the throttle, it's not going to cause many problems really. Um, sometimes it is hard when you try to brake at the same time though. Because if you brake it, you can't put your foot on the throttle, can you? So that makes it a bit awkward. But otherwise, it's not too bad. It's actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Um, it, it really is only just stop-start traffic that it's going to be an absolute pain in. So when you're driving, you just, you're just driving along. So you feel that little judder again, just because I've left the clutch out. But yeah, a little bit of throttle and you're good. So yeah, we'll, we'll carry this on when we get to uh, the town, the big smoke. That's where we're headed now from the countryside. I don't think I've done much filming of inside this car since it's been turboed really. Um, just kind of never really bothered. It's been about nine months now. Yeah, the standard clutch actually when we took it out shouldn't it have been nine months of use it was actually all right i didn't think it was too bad um i've kept it as a spare because i do plan to put a k20 in the jazz at some point i see there you go there's that little judas i'm slowing down for a car So say the difference as well with having the diff in, um, it probably won't look like any corners on here, but 
It says it's supposed to do 40 round these corners. Um, I took them a bit faster than that last night, and this is a road I drive frequently. Well, a hell of a lot actually, have done for all my life. And um, I can feel the difference completely in this car when you just take it round these corners because you, you know, as you put the throttle on before, it would start to pull a little bit. It, it, it sort of pulls you round the corner more. I guess that's what it's designed to do. Um, it's a wave track uh, limb slip in this box. I did look at all the M factory ones and they're all like, they need service after so long. And, and Whereas the wave track ones sort of uh, supposed to be non serviceable and lasts the lifetime of its use, which I guess anything lasts the lifetime of its use is a stupid comment to make in the thing there. But so that's kind of why I went for this one, just because I've had a Quaif and this is supposed to be very similar but better than what the Quaif was. And the Quaif gave me absolutely zero issues in, I think I had for nine years. I had no problem with it at all. Never let me down. So I decided I'd go for one of these over the M factory because that's just the way I decided. I figured it'd be hassle free. But yeah, so also with this having a slightly lighter flywheel and stuff in. Oh yeah, this is me about to do a traffic like that. Um, the, the revs do drop towards sort of like knocking on for about 600 but they do pick themselves back up um, I don't have the idle air assist valve anymore on the throttle body but it does seem to idle okay it's relatively smooth to be honest it maybe always did that before I'm not really sure but um, I maybe just noticed it more because I'm looking out for things that are different so here we go what an absolute wombat I must like look like trying to drive these that's like a kangaroo in. must look like a learner but yeah, well I am learning to drive a twin plate clutch. Let's try and do a different one here. Let's just try and let the clutch out gently. Nah, it doesn't work. It's too much you sort of drive like a lunatic. The, the fun thing's gonna be parking outside my friend's house when I call up for a coffee in a minute. That's gonna be fun. Um because it was fun last night at two in the morning trying to reverse back onto my drive anyway. Let's just say that. Please make it feel green. Please, please, please. I don't want to stop. It's like, yeah, go for that. Trying to keep going. Four way control, them lights. It takes me ages. It's a really small city centre. Let's get some of this uh, traffic lights and clutches going. Right, so we're off. Big revs and jerk. Learn a driver. I think if I can master the initial set off, that's the thing. I'm okay otherwise. It's just the initial set off is a bit awkward at times because it's very very on off ground is in case anyone likes football and League 2 football. Um, I'm a Forest Green supporter by the way. Um, but yeah it's, it's always a nice drive. It's just it's a nice way to get into a city. Uh, the South Road in London Road it's called obviously because it goes towards London. Like most cities have one of those. 
Uh, that's not quite as nice of a sort of driving, and I don't think the road from the north, which is the A7, is quite as nice in, but this one, I've always liked it with all the buildings and the old, kind of the proper, proper cool old houses here. But yeah, there's Carlisle United. Amazing. I've only been once in the 25 years I've lived in and around Carlisle. I think I've been once and once only. But yeah, so this is the end of my rubbish video of me driving this. Uh, unless my mate Owen decides he wants to come out for a ride in the car, which I doubt he will. But if he does, uh, then we'll carry this video on. Otherwise, I'll just drive back shortly. But yeah, let's go and try and park now, which is going to be the fun bit.